He joins us. He's the founder of Fairfield UK to talk about, oh, what a surprise. It turns out that the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan, had been planning all along, as people were claiming he was, and he denied, uh, to charge people per mile to drive in the capital city. A whopping, no, I said one pound, two pounds per mile uh, that he was uh, looking at charging. New, day, new documents have revealed. Howard Cox, uh, good morning to you. Good afternoon to you. I imagine this has come as no surprise to you whatsoever. Well, hello, Julia. And I love the moustache, Benedict. Um, Don't encourage him, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, you're absolutely right. This has been going on for two years. He spent already £150 million, uh, in on a secret project called Operation Gladys, um, which actually uh, is actually about pay per mile. And with this new Labour government in as well nationally, they're working together now to bring pay per mile uh, right across the country. I was, yeah. I was really fortunate, and I'm delighted we got that freeze in fuel duty in the budget. You know, I didn't expect to get that with Labour. Yeah. Um, Given what other taxes it, they I'm put up as the well. Trade-off. Yeah, the trade-off, though, is, of course, paper mile is definitely on its way. Well, this thing, you say he spent 150 million quid. Of course, I mean, yeah, he's not paid that. It's not his own money. It's it's taxpayers' money, uh, money that comes from the central government and from people who pay, you know, the 10 million people who live in London who pay their council tax and their taxes there. Um, I mean, again, this isn't about, like, congestion. The, the claims we've always had about, oh, we've got to limit congestion in the, in the uh, city areas, and then we've got to limit pollution. Again, pollution was going down long before congestion charges and, uh, and, and has continued to go down. It's been going down because vehicles are cleaner, and that's a good thing obviously but then it's all about all the congestion but most people's low clearance don't worry about congestion and you know what if you have to drive to the supermarket and back because you've got a big big load of stuff frankly it doesn't matter this congestion you still need to do the journey do you not so this two pounds per mile to drive london it's going to i think treble the cost of driving from outer london into inner london um but it's actually going to charge people for driving around their own localities which may not have any traffic at all and it's also going to be impacting on small sole traders who are doing yep. their business on a daily basis. And that's going to be passed on to, guess what, the Joe Public, people yep. in the, who don't even drive. Everyone's yep. going to suffer because of this. Yep. It will destroy London. It will destroy tourism. It will destroy the whole package. It's not been thought out. I've already written to him and said to him, where's his cost-benefit analysis on this? Yeah. How is he going to benefit Londoners? And also, I'm coming out in the next two weeks. I've been waiting for the American election and various other news items to actually calm down. I, I'm going to be coming out with a... Uh, uh, which I'm delighted to come on to your show to talk about. The fact is the ULES ex expansion has not made any difference whatsoever. We've analysed 37 yep. underground stations, top, you know, at roadside and also down on the platform, and I can promise you there's no difference whatsoever. No, exactly, and we, and we always knew that because they always make completely spurious claims with spurious backup scientific papers written by, written by uh, universities that get a huge amount of funding if they say the right thing. We know that's how these things work now. Everyone's in on it. But this is the thing. You know, if you live in a city, I don't understand this. It's one thing where I mean, we've got we've got a load of roadworks around my way, as a lot of areas do have across <laughs> the country. And you can bet, I mean, we live in a one-way system. Frankly, we, we can't even. Sometimes I'm like, I can't even work out how to get out of my road, let alone get anywhere in a reasonable time frame. But it is the case that you know there is traffic in a lot of places, um, and you might think, oh, wouldn't it be nice if there was less traffic? Well, you know, you've got you know 10 million more people than there used to be living in the country. Maybe that doesn't help. But also, if you live in a city. There's going to be traffic. If you want to live somewhere where there's no traffic, go and move to the countryside. People need to use their cars. I I, I go I go by tube most of everywhere. I get I get an Uber. You know, if it's if it's a journey that's not a direct journey or it's you know late at night. Um, otherwise, I pretty much walk everywhere. I barely I barely use my car. My car has cobwebs on the wing rows. But when I drive my car, I drive my car because I need to drive my car. Um, you're already charged per mile because oh you have to put petrol or diesel in or you know you top it up with electricity. Whatever, and you're charged for that, and you're charged VAT and fuel duty. They already get money per mile from us driving. So, what is the justification for adding yet another charge on every time someone gets in their car, even if they are absolutely need their car? As you say, they're you know they're a window cleaner, uh, they're a plumber. They can't walk around and catch buses with all their tools. Where is this? Oh no, we've. Oh no, Howard's frozen. I love the fact that Howard is actually in his car while he's talking to us. Uh, but I think his uh, screen is frozen because 
Oh no, we've lost him. Well, what a shame. Well, let me bring in Benedict Spence um, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure you feel just as strongly about this because it's just yet another charge and it's all mm. about we want to stop you travelling around and having freedom. Yeah, and you know, perhaps that would be fine if public, uh, if uh, public transport in, in London and other parts of the UK were good, but of course famously that's even well, no, worse. In actually. London it is, it, we're, we're very lucky, it's very good. Most parts of the country we get people have to rely on very unreliable buses. Yeah. And it's not good. Usually it's the only bus that you can get for an hour and if it turns up sort of five yeah. minutes early or something like that, well, you're stuffed I, then. I know people situation. who live somewhere where genuinely there's, there's a bus twice a day. I mean, and, and if that doesn't work with your working hours, well, tough. You have to get a car. I mean, Here's what's car. particularly impressive is if you try and get between Liverpool and Manchester of a day. You know, these places are about major, 25 miles. Major, major, wonderful, yeah. brilliant cities. Major cities, 25 miles them. apart. It's impossible. It's yeah. absolutely dreadful. I mean, it's absolutely mine. It might, anyway, we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, in the future. Really sorry we lost that line with Howard Cox.